Hi, and welcome to Test Talk. I'm Ed Mobley, and I'm here with my colleague, Justin Hankey. Today, we're going to talk about automation. Lots of discussions around automation. Oh, yeah. and, and so, you know, Justin, to kind of tee this up, what are, what are the drivers out there uh, for automation, and, and, and what are the challenges that organizations are facing as they uh, try to adopt test automation? Yeah, so I think that um, you know automation is talked about a lot. I think people kind of generally understand automation. I think if you ask most of our clients, uh, the answer is usually they're trying to uh, save time, save money, uh, some of these kind of standard answers. But um, on top of that, you can also think about uh, improving your test quality, more consistent testing, um, and uh, improve your coverage. Maybe to you know have more data variation that you couldn't humanly test all these things. Um, but one of the things that I also want to talk about today is um, if you put all those things together and if you have the right approach and and the, the right uh, planning and strategy behind your automation, um, all those things can actually culminate in getting your product out faster, getting it to your users faster. And so if you can wrap up a project a month earlier than you would have without automation, that's not just saving time from a testing perspective. All of a sudden, all those, all that PMO work and all the, the dev work and testing work, all of that ends a month early. So when you look at those kinds of numbers and that kind of actual impact of automation, it can be a, a really amazing thing. And, and again, people hear those, those value propositions, mm -hmm. but then they, they, they try and implement automation and, and things don't always go as expected. They, they don't see that, that ROI. And, and, yeah. and why is that? I mean, what, what's happening? Yeah, that's a good point. So like, you know, people get all these values that out of it that I talked about. But in reality, a lot of times, uh, if you don't follow the right approach, if you uh, haven't planned appropriately, you don't have the right strategy behind what you're doing, um, and you end up just automating for the sake of automating, um, your automation ends up being a cost instead of a, a time saver or money saver uh, kind of solution. So, um, so really I bucket that into like four different challenges. One is the approach you're using. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Um, another is um, uh, innovation. If you're using uh, the wrong tools or, or if you don't keep up with some of the newer, better, more efficient options out there to do what you need to do, um, and uh, uh, kind of that overhead and, and operations behind scaling automation. Um, and finally, maintenance. So all these things are kind of the, the big buckets that can detract from the value of automation. Create a negative ROI, basically. Yeah, and it ends up costing yeah. more than you're saving. Yeah, and again, we're gonna have a, a video specifically on automation ROI, so you'll, you'll definitely want to uh, look for that. Now, when I've had uh, conversations with folks about uh, test automation, they say, oh, are you talking RPA? Mm. So let's just kind of get that on the table. There, there seems to be a, a lot of confusion between, you know, test automation and, and RPA. Yeah, there, there is a lot of uh, discussion around that. Uh, robotics process automation is, in its truest sense, usually meant to automate production processes that uh, a human would do manually. Um, but th there are some use cases where it's valid for testing too. Um, uh, in a lot of ways they do operate similarly, identify objects similarly and things like this. Um, but uh, RPA is usually used for uh, maybe business users, people are less technical, can't write code, these kinds of things. Uh, if Traditional automation, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, uses obviously writes code, uh, you write scripts, things like this. Um, it's more for a technical crowd, um, but it also gives you more control. Some of those uh, advanced things that are very uh, fundamental to some of the complex scenarios we have aren't quite as easy to do in like an RPA kind of uh, tool. And, and RPA tends to focus more on, on doing things at the user interface level because you're, you're really too, yeah. trying to replace just traditional user that's interaction, true. while the traditional testing tools, if I if I understand correctly, not only can you use them at the at the UI level, but you could also dig a little deeper yeah. at, at the API level. Yeah, it gives you a lot more control over uh, interacting with data, databases, web services, these kinds of things that aren't as easily done in RPA. Um, RPA is one of those things that also helps um, 
when there's automation across applications, because that is one thing that traditional automation um, has a hard time with uh, as far as switching between a desktop application and then to a web application and across these kinds of things. Yeah, and I've seen a bit of an intersect, actually. Our, our uh, folks in India actually did an interesting uh, pilot. You, you mentioned navigating uh, across applications, so they were actually using a, an RPA tool to extract data mm -hmm. uh, to, to facilitate an automated test. So mm -hmm. still, you know, very separate, maybe maybe a bit of, if you look at a Venn diagram, some overlap there. Yeah, yeah, that's fair to say. So, so we talked about some of the drivers, uh, some of the, the challenges. So when you're asked to, to help somebody implement an automation strategy, mm -hmm. what do you do? How, how do you approach that? So, um, you know, back to the point earlier about trying to avoid automating just for the sake of automating. Um, we, we really want to look at uh, what's the right thing to automate. And um, based on uh, the technologies behind it, based on uh, how stable they are, based on all these things, we look at uh, what's the best thing to start with, uh, how can we get that ROI most quickly. Um, but also, you know, one of the things we found a lot of success in is showing up there with uh, a lot of assets that help uh, cut down that ramp up time. So um, a lot of times uh, clients will think, you know, they have to build everything from scratch um, and, and that just is a lot of investment up front, but it, we can show up with, um, you know, having uh, pre-built libraries for integration with other tools, for generating reports, like all these kind of standard things. Um, you can show up with half the work done kind of thing and that helps a lot with kind of getting over that initial hump of getting something running. And, and how flexible are you as, as far as using different tool sets? Is it like, because you, you mentioned we, we come in with, with a lot of artifacts. Yeah. Is, am I to infer that we, it's like, okay, you got to use this tools, here's the way to do it, irrespective of your investment, or is our approach a little more flexible? Um, it, approach and strategy-wise is, is definitely kind of tool agnostic. Um, some of the more common tools that, that are used today for uh, automation. We have like pre-built things that are intended for that, but there's kind of a, a selection across the most common tools. But um, even that, some of it, uh, like the self-healing automation that, that we have a different video on, there's like a, a an API version of that that's entirely tool agnostic, right? So there's things like that that um, uh, aren't tied to a specific tool. So we, we can work with within the constraints of a client's initial investment in, yeah. in automation tools if, if they've done that, or let's say they, they don't have a tool and, and maybe they need some help with uh, tool selection. Choosing the right one, yeah. We can work with them on that. Yep, yep. Yeah, we have a, a tool assessment that we've looked at probably about 10 different tools and across a bunch of different dimensions to say, uh, when you look at cost, when you look at the technologies it works with, when you look at kind of all these different factors and you know what's most important to you and your environment, we can kind of help figure out what makes the most sense. Yeah, and you know, I've, I've seen this with, with, with some, of, some of my projects, what may be the, the best tool for, for one type of uh, technology or, or, yeah. or, or client may, may not necessarily be the be the best tool and yeah. and, and also too I mean they're, they're tools that have various cost and, and licensing models and you know sometimes you have to consider you know a, a tool might be less expensive but it might take longer to automate and another tool might be you know more yeah, expensive there, yeah, yeah so there's trade-offs and, and so if I understand you right these, these are all things that we would we would look at Absolutely. as as we as we work with a with a client. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Justin, as, as as we wrap this up, any any other points you, you'd like to make? So, Justin, let's talk about the the context of of automation. I, I yeah. know sometimes folks, you know, it's like ah, it's kind of over there, but yeah. that, that's really not necessarily the right approach. Yeah. So, you know, we see it all the time, but but sometimes automation is treated as uh, just something on the side you put over here. There's some people writing scripts and you know, we do automation and it's great and whatever, but automation should be a part of your testing strategy. It shouldn't be, here's manual testing and our plan and our strategy, and then here's automation and our plan and our strategy. That's really one thing. To get the most value out of automation, you have to know where you're going, how does it fit in to your testing approach, your testing timeline and all these things, so that it's a, uh, if you think of it like pieces of a puzzle, they all fit together. Uh, they're not like separate siloed things. And that's how that's how we found we can get a lot of value out of automation. 
Well, I think there, there, there needs to be integration, not just with the, the testing effort, but the development effort, you know, with a lot of folks yeah. embracing CICD and yeah. you know, agile. Yeah, all those things even support that, that concept even more, yeah. So let's, let's talk a bit about innovation. You wanted to address that. Yeah, so, so uh, earlier I mentioned that uh, innovation is one of those things that can help you get the most value out of automation. Um, if, you've, if you're using an automation tool from 10 years ago to try to solve today's problems, uh, it's probably going to be a, more effort than it's worth. So if you stay on top of uh, what tools are out there, but also uh, create tools of your own maybe that help you solve problems that a traditional tool on its own uh, maybe wouldn't. Um, and those kinds of things, uh, whether it's self-healing automation or, or um, some tools we've built around uh, data analysis and, and data sampling to help you choose what test data to use and things like this, um, help solve some of those problems that uh, uh, if you just use a tool out of the box, you might not get. Excellent. Well, Justin, really appreciate you spending uh, time with us today on uh, Test Talk. Folks, we, uh, we trust you found that informative. Uh, we have a detailed uh, write-up at the uh, link below. We definitely want to hear from you. Yeah. you. You may have questions and, yeah. and we'd be more than happy to, to have a, a dialogue. Again, thanks for uh, spending time with us. Until next time, we'll see you on Test Talk. Yeah.